So at this point, we've got a proof of concept app in that we created a Cordova project, a very basic Cordova template project, and then we ran it in the device or the browser. Let's now start talking about, well, I want to run it on my real device. So if you did bring your real device, we're going to use it now. Um, this is going to be the next instruction, which is uh, number four. On number four, notice in big letters I have, do not plug your device into your computer before following these steps in order. So, step one, set up your real device as a developer device. Okay, I'm going to show you this on my virtual device, just so that I can show you something. And all the time when we do this part of the, of the class, there's always a lot of variation because the great thing about Android is that it's open source and everyone can work on it. The bad part about an Android is that it's open source and everyone can work on it. So when I tell you to go to this screen and yours isn't exactly the same, don't blame me. Blame your manufacturer. They changed it somehow because they wanted to do it better than the others. So I'm going to be showing you this on my virtual device. Don't do this on your virtual device. It makes no sense to do what I'm going to show you. I just need to show you something on screen because I'm not going to have everyone come over my shoulder and look what I'm doing here. I'm going to show you on the virtual device. So step one, we're going to set our device as a developer device. This is not jailbreaking it. This is not voiding our warranty. This is just activating it as a developer device so that we can side load apps, meaning put apps onto it besides the, the official app stores. So I, notice I say here, every device is different. Follow these the following steps are approximate. Uh, go to your home screen of your device. So I've got a home button. I'm going to click that. I go to the home screen. So I'm on the home screen of my device. Press the menu or settings button of your device. This is where there's always variation. On some devices, you've got a button where you can um, click a menu. Like on here, I've, it says menu. And on mine, I click that button and it doesn't bring up my menu. On mine, I have to swipe from the top. I swipe from the top and I tap and then I've got settings. I've got a little gear. It's not even labeled as settings. It's a gear. So basically, I have to get to the settings of my device somehow. On my virtual device, I can go to menu and click system settings. On my real device, I have to swipe from the top. Try this. Swipe from the top, tap at the top, and I see a gear. That gear then takes me to my system settings. So take a moment to try to figure that out. Go to the settings of your device. Uh, I think what you can also do, if it's not working that way, you can go to your apps, click on your app button, and on your app button you often have something called settings. Uh, this is just a single camera, tools, Google settings. Again, they all vary a little bit. So I'm going to try to go to this one that's called Google Settings. Google Settings. No, that's just for Google. So yeah, it's going to vary depending on your device. And I'm going to go to the System Settings. And then I've got here, OK. Um, Go to the home screen of your device, press the menu or settings on your device, select developer options. If you don't see developer options, you have to do this extra step. Modern devices don't have an automatic button that says developer options. They're trying to shield the regular consumer from this. They're trying to shield someone from making a mistake. So I need to activate developer options, and the trick here is I need to go to settings, about phone and tap build number seven times. Um, as I'm tapping them, it's going to tell me um, you're about to activate developer settings. So on my virtual device, it does show developer options, but if it didn't, I could go to about phone. There's build number one, two, three. Mine says, you've already got developer. But if it didn't, if I didn't have a developer screen right away, this is what I would need to do. I would need to tap that seven times and it would then tell you, okay, now you've got developer options. 
backing up, there it is, developer options. So I have developer options on my device. So, um, so there should be something that says USB debugging. It's going to be off. You want to turn it on. That means now I can plug in, I, I will be able to plug in my USB uh, cable to give me the ability to add my app to it. While I'm on this screen and I tap that, it's going to give me a big scary warning. Are you sure you want to allow debugging? USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between your computer and your device. Install apps on your device without notification and read log data. So in theory, if you've got developer options on and you visit some website that says download here for your lucky numbers, and you do it, it might give you an app that you don't expect. So at the end of the day, we're going to remember to turn this off. At the end of the day, we're going to go backwards. We're going to turn this off so that we're in normal consumer mode. We want to be in developer mode when we're in this class. I click OK. And while you're here, you should also turn on uh, Stay Awake. Because I'm going to be plugged in. I'm going to be getting power from the, from the computer, so it's going to be on at all times. But I'm getting power from the, device, from the computer, so that's OK. Once I'm done with that, I click on the Home button and I go back home. That's activating, activating developer tools on my device. The next steps then allow me to, to continue. But that's one of the things, the first things we need to do. Um, usually when I teach this part of the course, I show this in general, and then we take like five minutes to help people individually, because it always varies. Um, so if, if yours is not exactly this, don't worry. We're going to do a little help in a moment. I'm going to move on here, because the next step is I need the OEM USB driver. I need the original equipment manufacturer USB driver. This is not the same driver usually as the driver that lets me, for example, put my music onto my device. It's not the same driver that lets me, you know, do that consumer stuff. This is a special driver that lets me, as a developer, access the, the innards of the device. This, is, this always varies. But I've got a link here that might take you in the right direction to find your drivers. And then, of course, there's doing a search, go on Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever, and if you search the keywords, the name of your device, OEM USB driver, hopefully you'll pull up what you need. So for example, if I went over uh, online to search, and I've got the Motorola Moto E, I could search for Motorola Moto E OEM USB driver. And my first result, where can I download the USB driver? Pro tip, if you're using the Moto E, like me, that's the link you want. If you got the Moto E, I think almost all Motorola devices will work with this driver. It's a universal one. If you're using the Motorola, do a search just like I did, and the result that you want should be the one that says, where can I download the USB driver? Click on that, and it'll say download this file. <coughs> when you download this file, it'll be some sort of installation file. You'll need to go through the process of installing. Guess what? When you come back next time, you're going to need to install it again. So if you don't want to waste your time next time searching for that driver again, after you download it, save it on your USB drive so that you don't have to keep downloading it. So it's going to download and then I'm going to install it. So I've set my device to developer. I've downloaded and installed the driver. Now I can plug it in. And it hopefully pops up on the corner here, installing device, trying to access it, etc., etc. 
hopefully it works, and the ultimate way to see if this works, again, we'll do help in a moment, but the ultimate way to see if all of this worked, Cordova run Android. Notice run, not emulate. That's going to run it on my real device. It says right here, deploying to TA104, blah, blah, blah. That's the unique identifier of my device. Installing app on device. And then eventually it pops up here. Apache Cordova ready. Larry, can you confirm that I've got Apache Cordova? <laughs> there you go. So in theory, this works. Obviously, I make it look so easy. But now let's take a little moment to see if we, if you've got your device, let's take a little moment to see to get it to work on yours. Let's spend maybe five minutes or so. Call me over if you need help at any point here. Let's see if we can get it to work. 